thank the Lord God for allowing us to come together to assemble ourselves in the wonderful place, in the wonderful time. That's before the Lord. Yes. We can thank the Lord God for blessing us to come together and assemble ourselves that we have a mind to give God glory. You know, we could have been doing other things, but this is a special moment that we took time out. That we took the time out to give God glory. Yes. And this that we do, God honor. Mm -hmm. And we thank the Lord God for allowing us to have this mind. We all have the same mind. You know, it's it's, it's not a coincidence, it's not a surprise. But it's all because God planned this. Yeah. You know, like the like scripture say how a man, me, a man he established, a man, I want to see him here a second. The scripture say how we make plans and God directs the steps. So no matter how many plans we make, some kind of way God prevails with what he wanted to do. It's almost like you didn't know you was going east, but you had the mind going west. That's right. That's how God operates. He operates unexpectedly. And that's who God is. That's why we glorify him because he's control over everything. That's right. We thank the Lord God for allowing us to understand and know that he is God. No matter what goes on, he is God. Right. Nobody can take that from him. Nobody has that authority. Nobody has that power to take God authority. And that gives us comfort. And that gives us a mind to say God is with us. And we feel that once his presence in our life, that we know we can stay at peace. We can have our mind stayed on God. And so I thank the Lord God for allowing us to assemble ourselves together. Amen. So before we start, let's go into a prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, for blessing us. Oh, God, and ask you, Lord God, to keep us and guide us, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, thank you for the power that you have brought in our life. The power to save us, deliver us, Lord God, from this world, Lord Jesus. We are some blessed people, and God, we know it, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for being in our life, Lord God, and directing us, Lord Thank you, Lord God, for showing us love, Lord God, when we need the strength to continue to fight a good fight of faith, Lord Jesus. If it wasn't for your power, if it wasn't for your love, Lord God, your mercy and your kindness, we would not be able to stand with come before us. We ask you, Lord God, to keep us and help us to remember your word wherever we go. Oh God, bless everyone in the room. Let their hearts be touched by your word. Let your heart, Lord God, let your word touch their hearts and let your words change their minds and give them, Lord God, the people what they need, Lord God. I'm asking, Lord God, let me remain a humble servant to be used by you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God, for this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We do thank the Lord God for blessing us once again. We thank the Lord God for allowing us to assemble ourselves together. We thank God for continuing to bless us that we have this mind. But I thank the Lord God for this moment because, you know, I start thinking about this subject where sometimes when we go through, we blame the devil. And sometimes the things that happen, it's not the devil, it's God doing his work behind the scenes. And sometimes we miss it because we're too busy looking at the devil and because we look at the devil, we don't get the message that God's trying to teach us. Amen. Because we're so focused on what the devil doing and not looking at what God doing in the process. Okay. So sometimes when we go through things, God sometimes is doing two things. It's either he's making us and breaking us Amen. or he's developing us at the same time in our pain and suffering. So I'm going to show you the two things what God does when the trials and situation comes. You know, so one of the things God does in the, uh, uh, the, the book of uh, John, chapter 15. That's the book of John, chapter 15.
Book of John chapter 15. Beginning at verse 1. Book of John chapter 15. Beginning at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, mm -hmm. he taketh away. That's right. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges. That's right. That it may bring forth more fruit. That's right. Now ye are cleansed through the word which I have spoken unto you. So that's one thing he'd be doing. It's how he's pruning. He's cutting away to bring forth fruit out of us. Amen. So we may be saying it's the devil, but God be pruning us. That's right. He's cutting things off that's not like him. He's getting rid of the debris of the things that's holding us to grow thereby. Amen. He's working on us, and guess what? The cutting does not feel good, yeah. but it produces fruit. That's right. We think it's the devil attacking, but it's God pruning. And so we miss the message what God is trying to show us. Amen. And the pruning time is going to come because there's going to be a time we're going to get pruned. It's going to be a time we're going to prove. If we want to grow in God, that's going to be a proving time. Amen. It's going to be a time where God starts sniffing, cutting people, cutting situations. And then he's going to be like, this is not going to work. You're going to have to stop this or you're going to have to leave this. It's going to cut off things. He's going to cut off the circulation of things that brings off death in your life that it can die that you can live. So God does one of the things. He prunes. Right. And let's read another thing we do. It's in... Uh, 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 book of Hebrews. Let's establish what he does. He pruned in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Amen. Chapter 12, beginning at verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. Striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. See, God is speaking to us. Amen. When he's doing something to us, he's speaking to us. Yes. Are we listening? Are we available to hear what he's telling us? God is speaking to us. So he remember. Despise not that the chastising of this Lord. See, that's what I'm talking about when you think it's the devil's chastising. Mm -hmm. Not faith when thou art rebuked. Don't Lord. give up because you're being rebuked by the Lord. For whom the Lord loveth, he chases. Huh? See, who the Lord loves, he chases. And for scorn is every son who he receiveth. Oh, he's getting every son ready. He's preparing everybody to get you ready. If ye endure chastise, that's the thing. If you can deal with the rebuke, if you can deal with the chastise, what happens if you endure? God dealeth with you as your son. That's the one. This is what God does. Is either He's pruning us or He's chasing us. It's either pruning or discipline. That's right. Either way it go, he's doing something, and both of them does not feel good. Amen. Both of them does not feel good. He's either pruning us or he's disciplining us. Pruning, he's cutting away. Death, when he's disciplining us, he's building us to listen and be a obedient child. Amen. Obedient to what his what the father is saying to the child. We are a child of God now. Amen. If we endure chastisement. When we set up and allow God to chastise us, we've been treated like a child of God. See, a lot of people will say, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God, I'm a child. You can't be a child without chastising. That's right. You can't be a child without rebuke. You can't be a child that God does not put something on you to show you that you are going the wrong way. That's what he does. God does us like a child, like the scriptures say, train up a child in the way it should go. Amen. And when you get old, we shall never depart. It's the same for us. That's why he disciplined us. It's the same thing us. Because in our minds, we don't see what's in us. Amen. We don't see what we're dealing with. 
We don't see what God is trying to bring us. We're so focused on thinking we're all there and all that. But God knows where we fall short at. God knows where we need pruning. God knows where we need discipline. He knows. See, in our minds, we think, okay, I'm all together. I have no problem. But God looks a little deeper than that. He looks beyond that what we can see. That when he comes and he brings something to us, he shows us where we at in him. Give me on uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. So what God does. So what God does to the point where when, when he prunes and he disciplines. So part of the pruning and discipline, it brings about something. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 17. Yeah, chapter 17. Verse 10. And verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. There you go. That's what he does. I'm I pruning and discipline. He's searching us. When he prunes and discipline, he searches, searches us. See, a lot of people have these big testimonies. And they think this and that about themselves. But the Lord searched the heart. Amen. It's just like Peter thought, I will not deny you. I will die for you. I will not deny you. And he had to go through some discipline. Amen. That's right. The Lord searched the heart. You see, sometimes we'll think we're ahead and we're way behind. Amen. So God had to search the heart and tell us, you're not really there yet. He only do it because he loves us. That's why. He's trying to show you because he wants us to be saved. That's the only reason why. Don't feel bad about it. Feel glorious because why? He's dealing with you like a child of God. Amen. Read it, my brother. I try to, I try to read even to give every man according to his ways and I'm, according to the fruit of his doing. I'm, I'm looking at everything. Amen. It's connected to what's inside of you. Amen. You may see it, but I see it. Everything is connected inside of you. So whatever you're doing inside of you will wind up affecting what happened to you later. So what I got to do? I got to clean that up. I got to prune it. I got to discipline Amen. and clean it up where you don't have this hindrance anymore. That's right. I got to do something. Amen. But it's not Amen. to the point he's not going to do something because he's doing it just because he's doing it that we volunteer for right. Are we willing to volunteer for the pruning and the discipline? Mm -hmm. Are you willing for God to make the changes in your life? Amen. Are you willing? That means you got to be open and available. That's right. You got to be doing something here. Mm -hmm. it's like, give me Psalm 139. You got to, when, when you stand before God and God got to prune you or discipline you, you got to be willing to be open. That's right. You got to be willing to be open and not say, Lord, I, I, I don't want you to touch this or that. You got to be open before Lord. Yeah. What the scripture read there? Psalm 139, first verse. What did he say? Oh Lord, thou hast searched me. He said, search me, Lord. And know me. Lord, look into me. See, I wonder about how people say they pray and they seek the Lord and they walk away the same way. I wonder about that. Because when you pray before God, something happens. Some kind of things affect you. And when you be talked to a real prayer, I wonder if people really pray. Or they're just talking. Or they're just running their mouth before God. Or they just chitter chatting, just saying all these things. I wonder if people truly pray before God. Because when you go before God, something happens. When you lay your faith before God, something happens. Something God does inside of you that you can't even explain. That's why I wonder if people really lay down before God. And then only that's that's the thing about it. They just pray. They never ask God to search me. Amen. Whatever it is, Lord, what is it that's hindering me? Yes. What is the thing that you have to prove me about? What is the thing that the discipline about? Search me, Lord. You know what the problem is. I'm not going to hypocrite. You shine the light on me. Right. Let me see who I am. I give you the permission, Lord. Search me. What he said, my brother? Thou knowest my downstairs and my upright. You know me. You see me. Amen. You see me. We got to sit 
up here. We, we just can't sit up here and just talk to God and not tell God to look into me. Amen. See if I'm on the right track. Right. See if I'm in your will. Amen. See if I'm not really of your child. I want to make sure, Lord, I'm in the right direction. Hallelujah, Lord. I want to see if I'm headed your way and I'm off track. Lord, search me. Lord, show me the spots. Show me the blemish. And if I can't erase it, Lord, step into my life and cleanse me up, Lord Jesus. I need you to help me, Lord, to walk this walk, to live this life. I cannot do it without your help. But I want to be honest, whatever it is in these searches, I'm open before you, Lord. I'm, I, my mind's open, my heart's open. Everything, show me myself. That's a real person. To say, Lord, look at me. Show me. Show me not just my beauty. Show me my ugliness. Show me that what you need to work on. Show me what your hands are in my life. I need to see something about me, Lord God, that's messing my walk up. I don't want to keep walking. I got these issues. I don't want to be walking if I got bitterness in my heart, if I got hatred, if I got forgiveness. Lord, search me. What's happening is going to pop up in your heart. He's going to show you something wrong. And that's when he started proving. Yes, Lord. That's when he started disciplining. He showed you. You know, when David stepped out there and he saw Bathsheba, that was his test. Your pruning starts off as a test. It starts to show you where you at in God. He showed them he had to see it. And then what God had to do, he had to come and discipline. He had to discipline them. I'm not saying God going to put bad things on you. The thing about it, sometimes discipline of God, he just breaks your heart. When the discipline comes, sometimes you just break your heart. That's a blessing your heart can get broken by God. When you can sit up there and cry and talk to the Lord and everything that's in you start coming out. That's the real prayer. That's how I'm talking about a real prayer. Give me a moment. It's a song, so 162, I believe. 162. It's a lot of things. It's a one, one, I mean, a Psalm 162. Uh, Psalm 62. It only goes to 50. 162. At verse. At verse. Uh, 62, 62. Verse, verse, verse 6. Psalm 62, verse 6. Amen. He only is my rock and my salvation. See this? What is going to you when you're talking to him? Amen. What is he against you? Is he your rock? Can you lean on him? Can you trust him with your soul? He's your salvation. That's what he's saying. God can save me. I can't save myself. You're my salvation. You're my redeemer. You're the one that saved me from hell. You're the one that got me out of the bad situation. You are my salvation. You are my life. Read my brother. He is my defense. He shall not be moved. He's my protector. That's why I'm not falling behind. That's why I haven't got out of the race. Because he's protecting me. He's got his hands and he's protecting me. And I'm able to fight back because the Lord is my defense. That's why I haven't given up. Because he's given me the strength to fight back. I just don't lay down. He tell me I'm powering God and say, get back up and start fighting. Don't quit. Keep fighting. I am your defense. I will protect you. I will defend you. You're my child. You're my child. I'm not done with you yet. You're my child. Don't give up. You're my child. Amen. Go ahead, my brother. And God is my salvation and my glory. He's my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge. He's my rock. He's my, this, I, when, when things get hard, I hide myself in God. He's my refuge. When the earth gets too, when it's, when it's too much stress, it's too many anxiety, I got a place to hide. I can hide in Jesus. He's my provider. He's my protector. I can hide when the storm comes. When you find me, he's my shelter. He's covering me from the storm. He's my refuge. I find safety in Jesus. That's why I'm so calm sometimes. Because I find safety in Jesus. He's my refuge. For everybody else struggling and running around trying to figure it out, I'm hiding in him. That's right. Amen. I'm protecting him. Amen. 
That's why I ain't nervous because he got me here. I'm in him. He's my refuge. He's protecting me. He's my shield. Protect me from the rain. Protect me from the sun. That's why I don't feel the full effect because he's my refuge. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep reading my book. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times. All times. That's right. And I, not sometimes. All, all times. times. That's right. Go ahead, my brother. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Mm -hmm. Pour out your heart before him. Psalm 62 yes. and verse 7. Yes, this is what you do when you stand before God. See, all these people, and that is so, how can you sit there and say you're praying to God, and after you finish praying, you went before the maker, the one that loves you, the one that shows kindness, the one that shows you mercy, and then after you get up from the prayer, you're going to hate your brother. How is that? Amen. Did you really talk to him? Right. Did you actually really talk to him? It's right. something about when you really talk to God. It's something when you talk to him real. Something happened when you talk to him real. It's no holding back. It's no hypocrite. You're being real. Lord, I messed up. Amen. Lord, I have some issues here. Lord, I can't get this right. Help me, Lord. That's when you open up. That's something. What you, you know what you're doing? Keep, what you're doing? Read it right there, my brother, what you're doing. Trust in him at all times, these people. Pour out your heart. Before you're you. pouring out your heart. Oh. You're emptying all this stuff that's in you that's right. before the Lord. That's why he's like, God, search me. Whatever it is, Lord, search me. You know how he said, I give up. Search me, Lord. I'm not running. Search me. I'm not hiding from you. The light on. For order for me to live in the light, I have to stay in the light. Lord, search me. Whatever it is I'm doing, show me myself, Lord. I ain't looking at my brother and sister. Show me myself. Show me my error. Show me my wicked ways. Show me my crookedness. I don't want to see nobody else. I'm working on me. I got too much time to work on me. I don't got time to look at nobody else. Lord, show me me. That's right. Show me me. Lord, I'm open up before you and say, Lord, search me. That's right. I don't understand how people talk about, well, I had a good prayer, but I hate you. Amen. Scripture talks about you. <laughs> you can't love God and hate your brother. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's trying to say that don't go together. Yes, that just don't go together. You say, I, I, I love the Lord. Yes, Lord. That's why God told He said, the greatest commandment is these, to love the Lord God. He, he said, love God. Yes. He said, the other one is right into it. Yes, love thy neighbor as yourself. Just like the love is yourself. Love your neighbor. Say, right underneath there. Right underneath there. God saying, okay, you love me, but you're also going to love others. Because why? You're going to learn how to love from me. And the same love you learned from me, you're going to learn how to love the other people. The same mercy that I gave you, you're going to learn to learn that mercy. Because God, that love from loving me, you have spent time with me. And the more you ever spent time with somebody so much that you pick up their ways. You pick up the habits, you start doing what they're doing, saying what they're saying. You, 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 just, you be repeating them. I said, that's, oh, I've been hanging around that person. I'm saying the same thing they say. They say that. Well, that's how it's going to go. When you spend time with him, you start imitating him. And that's what you want to be like. You want to be like Christ. Spend some time with Jesus. Spend some time in prayer so you can get the closeness with him. Don't just briefly and pray. And when you pray, open up your heart and be real. Like the scripture said, pull out your heart. Lord, I got hatred in it. Pull it out. Amen. Pull it out. I got lust in it. Pull it out before God. See this, Lord. Amen. See, people be praying. They, they got that they safe prayer. They be safely praying. Lord, help me. Lord, keep me. Lord, God. But I'm talking about when you broke you, you, you want to say a real prayer? Give me a home song 51. You want to see a real problem? Somebody pulling their heart out. Amen. You want to see a real problem? Somebody who's just pulling your heart out. Amen. He's giving you an example of pulling your heart out. Psalm 51 and verse 1. Psalm 51 and verse 1. Have mercy upon him. This is after David failed. Yes, This is after David made his mistake with Bathsheba. And what he did, he didn't run 
from God. He went to God and pulled out his heart. He didn't say, Lord, keep me, guide me. It wasn't a pretty prayer. It wasn't pretty. Because you know why I was part of that prayer? The discipline. Remember, he disciplined those he loved. So stop blaming the devil. Oh, the devil did it. God is working something in the midst of that. Amen. God is doing something in the midst of that. Even though the devil may do something, God was turning around and working his in favor. That's how God operated. We too busy looking at the devil and missing the lesson. We too, the devil is. The devil that God said, I'm speaking to him. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you, you got an issue. You burn on the devil, but guess what? I'm doing something in it. I'm pruning you. I'm chasing you. I'm disciplining you. Are you ready for the change? Amen. Are you ready to change from who you are? Or are you just settled and satisfied with the state and condition you're in? Because guess what? I see your heart. I know what's his. I see what's going on. You don't see it. I see your shortcoming. coming. That's why I'm chasing you. That's why I'm pruning. That's why I'm dealing with you. I'm telling you. That's right. Like right here, it says, it's not no safe prayer. It's a man who's open. Read it. Read it, my brother. Have mercy upon me, O God, mm -hmm. according to that loving kindness, mm -hmm. according to the multitude of that tender mercy, blot out my transgression. That's Lord. You know, it's, uh, I always look at that. I remember when I read that. It's amazing the understanding of that. He said, blot out my transgression. Yeah. In other words, God, when you look at me, blot it out. If my sin's right here, blot it out. So all you see is this. You see my change. Amen. You see me coming. You, 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 you're not looking at my sin. You blot it out. Amen. You blot out that you don't say, blot out my transgression. Don't look at me as a sinner. Don't look at me as somebody wrong. Look at me as your child. Go ahead, my brother. Wash me thoroughly from my... He said, wash me. Wash me. Yes. Amen. No, I just don't want no forgiveness. Wash me, Lord. I need you to clean me up. I don't need just forgiveness. I need you to do some work on me. Cleanse me under places that I am not acknowledging. I need you to help me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. When God starts working on it, it's a cleaning process. You ever throw something in the water and you start washing it? You just, just turn and wash it and say, open up, done. No, we have to go through a process. It have to go through some struggle that I got to get beat from side to side until it becomes clean. That's what God start doing, cleansing us. That's right. But we don't want the discipline. We don't want the pruning. But in order for you to be a child of God, you're going to have to go through some of these things. God had to show you, okay, I know that was your friend, but it wasn't. I got to cut you from that. Because now you see that it wasn't. They didn't have their best interests. They didn't care about you. So I'm going to prove it from you. And when I cut it, it's going to hurt me. Because why? You was too close to it. I'm going to cut you because you was too close to it. And so when I cut you, you're going to feel it. Because when God cut you, he cut you close. He cut your clothes. Yes, Go ahead, my brother. Walk me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression. That's it. He's open. He's pouring out his heart. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was me. Amen. I acknowledge it, Lord. You see, that's the problem. Let me say something about people. When they do wrong, they focus more on the person that they're wrong to. That's good. That's beautiful. But don't get caught up into that. Get caught up into God's forgiveness. Because if you get caught up into the people that you're trying to repent and ask God for forgiveness for, you're going to stop looking at him and you're going to start looking at them. Amen. They're going to become your God. Amen. They're going to control your joy. They're going to control your strength. How you feel. God is the supreme. Amen. Before anything, make sure you get it right with God. We say, get it right with the people, but most first thing of all, get it right with God. And that's what he did. I acknowledge my wrong. I'm hoping on it. Amen. That's what I be wondering. Do people really pray like this? Or do they pray? 
Look at her. Look at him, Lord. But they don't say it in the sense, but in their heart, they don't see themselves. They don't see themselves in their prayer. When you're supposed to pray, it's not about anybody else but you and God. Amen. Ain't nobody hearing anything, anybody else but you and God. That's how your prayer is supposed to be. It's between you and God. When you step before God, He starts showing you. Oh, I'm going to have to cut you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to discipline you. When he brings you forth the discipline, let me tell you something about the discipline. When God brings forth discipline, it breaks your heart. And when you cry before the Lord, I know it's feel bad, it's a good thing. That let you know God is dealing with your heart. That let you know you're still his child. Because you're affected about the wrong you've done. You see yourself, you feel it. Because why? You feel the pain that you caused him. So you cry like a child, I did my father wrong. It's just like the son he called prodigal. He said, Father, and I said this, he ran up to the father. He felt the pain of leaving his father. Amen. That's what the discipline was. He struggled. And all this stuff he had to go through. God started disciplining him. He started disciplining him. He sat up there. He said, I in my father's house. He started remembering God. That's what the discipline caused you to keep your mind on God. Amen. That's what discipline does. Amen. It gets you in tune and gets your focus. It makes you take the Lord more serious. You sit there and start crying. And before long, you start getting real with it. And now when you pray, your prayer is real. He ain't no hypocrite like David said. I acknowledge. What he said there, bro? Well, I acknowledge my transgression. See, this is a man that's been disciplined. And my sins is ever before me. No, you see me. That's right. You see me. Amen. You see me, Lord. Ain't no hiding. That's when he said, pull your heart out. He's Amen. pulling his heart out. This is a real prayer. That's right. He's pulling his heart out. Amen. It's like his heart is open. That's right. Ain't nothing he hiding from God. God sees everything. He already sees it. But when we bring it to him, he loves That's right. Amen. He loves us when we acknowledge something true. Yes, Lord. Go ahead, my brother. Against thee, the only see that? have I sinned. Wait a minute. You... You see, see, he take it, he took it more serious. Right. I made wrong to everybody else. But what I've done to God is more worse than ever. That's right. Amen. I may hurt this person. I may offend this person. But what I've done God to God? Yes, Lord. I feel that. Amen. I understand that. I can get away from you when I wrong. I can hide. I can go in another place. But God. He said, my sins are for, it's, what did he say? Against thee. Uh-huh. Thee only. What's that? Have I sinned. Go ahead. And done this evil Look. in thy sight. Listen, go back up some. For I acknowledge my transgression, mm -hmm. and my sin is ever before me. I, I can't hide. I can hide. If I offend you, I can hide from you. Amen. If I done you wrong, I can hide. That's right. I can go away. I can avoid you. I can't hide from God. My sins are forever before Him. I can't hide from you. That's why I tell you, repent to God also. You did Him wrong before anybody. Because why? He believed in you. He watched over you. He loved you. He took care of you. And that's why it's your hurt because you hurt Him. And you can't hide. I can avoid you all I want. I can you can. I can look at that from a moment still. Push still. But when God stops dealing with you, you can't hide. You can't hide. That's right. You go in the bathroom, the most private yeah, place yeah. in the house is supposed to be. God's there. That's right. He said, when we read that out, uh, uh, 130, uh, 39, he said, if I make my bed here, God, you're there. I can't hide before you. There is no place to hide. You're chasing in me. I feel the wrong that I did you. Right. Yes, I may have wronged other people, but I feel it because I can't hide from you. You see me. Amen. You see me. I mean, this is uh, this is the most honestly beautiful prayer that you can ever hear. Amen. And you know what makes it so honest? He gives us for us to read it. 
just showing you the relationship that him and God has. Amen. It's like I'm, I'm talking to you about us. Amen. I messed up. You see it. So I'm going to cleanse me. Amen. You see that problem I had? Cleanse me. That's right. Cleanse me. Cleanse me, Lord. I could work on you. Oh, yeah. I want you to work on me because I know when you work on me, change is going to happen. I know I'm going to be a different person when you work on me. Because now I'm acknowledging it. I'm acknowledging it. Lord, it's me. It's me. I'm not blaming my brother. I'm not blaming my sister. It's me. I can see you work on it on me. That means you can change me. That's how change starts. It starts with the announcement. That's right. It starts with the announcement. It say I did wrong. I did wrong, though. I did wrong. You know, it's just wrong. And listen, if you look at it, he made it so plain and simple, sweet and sharp, against thee, I say. That's right. He made it so plain, I, I did you wrong. Yes. You're going to keep dealing with me. I'm going to let you not feel it. I feel the chastisement. I feel the chastening. Amen. I feel the discipline. Yes. I feel you dealing with me. I can't sleep at night because you're dealing with me for what I do. I can't rest easy. That's why I don't understand how people say they pray before God and treat people any kind of way. Have you really talked to the Lord or really what you pray to yourself? What is this real spiritual prayer? I'm not talking about a good prayer. When you get up and out of nowhere and all of a sudden out of something, you know something changed. You can't explain it. You know he's doing something. And you just get up and you call on him and you pray to him and you get up all of a sudden you know something happened in you. You don't know what it is. You can't explain it. But you know it's a change somewhere. He changes somewhere. You know he's doing something because you open your heart and you pour it out before the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm here right here. I'm not hiding. I'm not hiding from you. You see me. Why should I hide from you? Where my brother? Verse 4. Against thee, behold, mm -hmm. have I sinned, mm -hmm. and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, mm -hmm. and be clear when thou judgest. Mm -hmm. Behold, I was sharper than the nip, mm -hmm. and in sin did my mother conceive me. So he acknowledged him what his issues is. That's right. Yeah. He said, this, 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 this is something that's in me. Yes. I need you to cleanse me. Yes. See, when God starts cleansing you, he starts changing you. Whenever God starts putting that situation where he's cutting you away, I, kept, I hope stop looking at the devil. You're missing the message that God is trying to tell you. He may be cutting you. He may show you people. He may be cutting you. And the thing about it, it's not always time when he's cutting people from you. He's cutting you from yourself. We got ways that we grew up with and got comfortable with. We thought it was the right way. We have the same attitude. We have the bad understanding. We treat people badly. And God was saying, that's a problem. I'm going to have to cut you. Amen. You have to go to the knife. That's right. I'm going to have to cut you. The only for you to wait to bear freedom, I'm going to have to cut you. I'm going to have to cut you. If you don't want to cut you, I'm going to have to discipline you. So you want the knife or you want the hand? Which you want? Your choice, the knife or you want the hand? You, you have the choice of which one you want. That's a choice right there. Choose which. You want me to cut you? It's going to hurt that way. And if I have to put my hands on you, it's going to hurt that way. Your right. choice, the pruning or the discipline. Yes. So they were saying, we said, wash me and clean me. And I'm going to tell you something about that. When you allow God to cleanse you, cleanse you, the more you start changing. That's right. The more you start being more responding to when God speaks. Because why? You allow him. You know, I, I remember I read this book and I love it. He said, uh, it was a beautiful book. It's called Necessary Endings. It's written by a psychologist. He said this, when God prunes, that means he brings the flower close. So if he brings the flower close, that means he's close to you. 
even though it feels like he's not close. But because he's close to you, pruning, he is there. It may not feel like it, but he's there. Amen. Because he's the one that's cutting you. He the devil is him, he's the one that's cutting you. But when God starts cutting you, he changes you. He changed you from here to there to another person. With David, he changed. And now, with the same thing here, he began to have a different testimony. Amen. Give me on Psalm 26. Psalm 26. Show you this, this different testimony. Psalm 26 at verse, verse, Psalm 26, at verse, 26. <laughs> uh, at verse, at verse 4. Psalm 26, verse 4. Yes, sir. I am not set with vain persons. See, you know what? Verse 2. Watch this. See? Amen. See, he's still open. Amen. This is what happened. After you. All this cleansing, something happened to him. Look what he said. Verse, what he said in verse, verse 2. two. It's them with me. Oh, you Lord. know, I'm sorry. Verse 1. That's a key word here. Amen. Go Judge ahead. me, O oh Lord. Whoa. Verse 1. Look how David is. Amen. Look. Look how he He's open. This is, the, this is why he's a man after God's heart. He's open. With all that cleansing, he's like, oh, judge me. It's, it's like, it's saying, I don't want to be judged by you. Judge me. Judge me. I don't want to stand before you in judgment. Whatever it is, judge me now. Yes. That's right. I have to wait for judgment day to be judged. Judge, what is it, Lord, about me? Amen. What is the, what, what's, what's my problem? What is the thing that's causing this, this disruption? What is the thing that is disturbing? What is the thing that I am doing that is a hindrance? Judge me, Lord. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Judge me, O oh Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. You see, he's like, I'm walking in my honesty. Amen. See, there's a different testimony here. Go ahead. I'm walking in, I'm walking up in the rightness. Of Christ. I'm walking in the truth. Go ahead, my brother. I have trust also in the Lord. And that's the key. Amen. That's the key. Every time you get chastened, every time you get proved, the key thing for your development is trust. Amen. You have to trust him in it. That's right. You may not like it, but trust him. He knows what he's doing. Yes, Lord. Trust him. You have to trust the Lord. Yes, Lord. Trust him when it's It's like, oh, Lord, this hurt, but I trust you. Yes. I don't like what I'm going through, but I trust you. I'm allowing you to lead me in this. I don't know what's going to happen, but I trust you. Go ahead, my brother. Therefore, I shall not slide. There you go. See? <laughs> you see that? See what happened with trust? You ain't moving nowhere. That's right. That ain't moving. God is your foundation. That's right. God is your rock. Amen. Rock is there as a place of heaviness. You're not going nowhere because God rests upon you. Amen. God got you locked down that you don't slide. You right there ain't going nowhere with God. You're going to die. Your mind is made up. This man is saying, judge me, Lord. That's right. I don't been through a lot, Lord. See me. Look at me. Show me. Look at me, my brother. Examine me, oh Lord. Look at me. That's right. This is, the scripture said, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. And truly, if you're a child, you better watch and show it that you're walking with God. Anybody can profess, profess I follow God. Anybody. If you follow God, one of your strongest desires is to follow his word. Anybody can say that. That's one thing about the devil. He can pretend to follow God, but he can't follow God's word. That's his error. He'll fall into a certain point where he got to deceive. He can't follow God to a certainty. The only time the person that can follow God to the fullest is the one that loves him. When you love him, you're going to follow him. And when you're going to follow him, you're going to trust him. It's going to lead and guide you. Go ahead, my brother. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my ring in my heart. See that? Lord, look at me. See what it is about me. See, that's, 
Is this an open prayer about me? Ain't about all these other things. You know, people they be praying, Lord, give me this, give me that. What y'all going to do? Wait, wait, wait. Lord, is that me? That's right. Yes, I want a job. I want a new house. I want a new car. Yes, I want these things. But examine me, Lord. That's right. What about your spiritual health? What about your spiritual health, your spiritual life with God? Right. It should be more elevated over your personal things. It should be elevated for all everything. Your spiritual life should be over everything. That's why it's true to say, seek thee first the kingdom of God. Because God can bless you with it. But if you focus on him, it's above the whole things. It comes with it. If you focus on the one that's blessed, the blessings come with it. What do you say here? Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my room and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. See, God done something to him. It's talking about that God. Let me say something. It's something about when God do something. He changed the way you talk. He changed the way you think. He changed the way you act. And don't say, listen, do not put yourself on the meter of somebody else to say, do you see me change? Put yourself on this. Let God cleanse you. This is where you put yourself at. You don't put your direction of where you're going, how you're doing, in somebody else's life and hands. Put it in the hands of God. No man has that power. Not me, not you. Nobody has that power over your life like God. Put your life in God's hands. Whatever direction you go, you go in God's hands. God has showed you where you at. Go ahead, my brother. But I love and count it before my eyes, mm -hmm. and I have walked in that truth. Mm -hmm. I have not sat with vain persons. Neither will I go to that and change. It affect me. I'm not going to get around foolishness. That's right. I'm not going to hang it. You know, I know, I know. I, just, I, I still say this. I'm like, um, I don't. You know, if you're a friend or somebody, and we together. And every time we're together, you're talking about your friend, y'all supposed to be close. I'm gonna stop hanging with you. Yes. That bothers me. I, 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 my line, and I still stand by. I don't hang around a friend that talk about a friend. Amen. When you sitting down there talking about him, looking at you, oh, I, I, you ain't no good company. Amen. Hey, I, I, I don't want none of that stuff to spear on me. Oh, you, you, you stay where they at. You start seeing me be short a little bit. Hey, yeah, all right, how you doing, man? <laughs> Today, yeah, I'll see you later, man. I, I, you, you, I, I always been, you know me. I'm cutting that short. This is what David said. I'm not, I, I'm not being around nothing like that. See, that's the problem. People like to hang around their sin. If somebody is in the same situation, the same mindset, the same thing that agrees with their role, they're going to hang around. You gotta be mature spiritual enough to say, I ain't getting around that because why? You gonna respect my spirit. I'm already trying to deal with this. If you hang around, if you got a lust problem, and you hang around lustful people, you will have a problem. I can't get around you. Yeah, if you got any, the Lord, I'm not trying to gossip. I'm like, if you hang around and gossip, you won't be gossip again because it's easy to swing to them because they have a strong spirit in them. So what am I do? I'm not gonna hang around that. I hate that. Hate what God hates. Yes. He has so much effect on me. I'm hating what God hates. God gave me to hate the things that I used to love now. I'm being affected. I hate it. I'm, I'm not hanging around there. See, that's what people do. They hang around people that agree with their sin. They agree with them. That's right. And see, if you've done something wrong, you know what? They, they don't want nobody to say, you know you. You was wrong. Wow, I don't, I don't like you. I don't hate around you. But you get around and say, you're wrong. You know you did that. Oh, yeah. I ain't trust them. I know something wrong with them. Oh, you right. You were right for that. So you're sitting around, you're hanging around something that gratifies your sin. Amen. You're getting comfortable. That's right. When it comes down to food, it ain't no comfortable. When it comes down to discipline, it ain't no comfort. That means I got to pull away even though I love you and I like you, but I can't be around you. Right. You have an issue that I cannot be around. 
David said, I hate that. I ain't gonna sit around baby. I'm not sitting around. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gathering around that. You look at that one, what I start seeing, I'm like, I'm just like that. See them exit? I'm like, oh, exit. Uh-huh. 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 Baby. I'm going, I'm going the first thing I do, I'm looking for an exit. Amen. That's right. I'm, I'm in my mind. How can I end this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> How can I pull away from this paper? <laughs> 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 it's always sitting there. It's like, man, I'm like, oh. it's always sitting there dealing with you. Like, oh, Lord. Oh, this vain person gets in there. Oh, Lord, Jesus. You know, like, <laughs> then you're like, ah, that's enough of the kindness. <laughs> so, Tyler just got to hey, man. Ah, the way you be talking, I can't deal with that. I can't do that. Amen. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to walk with God. I'm not, I'm not better than you. But you have an effect on me. You know, do what you do, but I'm going to do what I got to do. I can't handle this. Right. You're bothering my walk. I can't deal with you. I, I can't be around bad people. I can't be around that. I can't be around people that don't have a life to live for God. I can't deal with that. You know, if you want to do your thing, do your thing. This is my walk. You don't have to walk my walk. I wish you would. Amen. But hey, this is my walk. Amen. I can't hear you around with you. He said, Lord brought me out. Yes. You're bringing me back in. The more I hang with you, the more it makes it seem appealing. I'm starting to get back that feeling like I like it. But I gotta hate with the body. Right. Go ahead, my brother. I have not sat with vain person, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hate in congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. See, that, that's, that's when the chastening happens, it brings forth discipline. Amen. When you used to say yes, now you say no. Because you got discipline, you, 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 it was easy to say yes. But when the Lord thought discipline you, out of nowhere, you start to say no. Because of the discipline of the Lord. Amen. It, 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 it's about bringing forth something out of you. That's what the discipline does. Go ahead, my brother. I will wash my hands in innocence, so will I compare thy altar, O Lord, that I may publish with voice of thanksgiving and tell of all that wondrous work. Yeah, he said this. <laughs> you want to hang around me? Hang around me talking about the Lord. Amen. Because I'm, I'm going to be thanking God and talking about the wondrous things he's done in my life. That's right. He brought forth something in my chastening. That's right. Something came out of me. Something changed in me. After the tears don't stop, I still may cry, but something came out of that. That's right. Let's go back to the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12. Let's, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12. Okay. Give, uh, verse 7. Verse 7 of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. The chapter 1, verse 7. If you endure this time, mm -hmm. if you endure, God dealeth with you as with son. See, that's what it is about the endurance. The more you stay, the more you change. It's about enduring. It's about hanging in there. It doesn't feel good, but if you hang in there, something's going to happen to you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, my brother. But well, what son is he who the father ch chasing is not? He said, what, what kind of father does not tell his child nothing when he's doing wrong? What kind of father? Is that a good father that his child just go about putting himself in danger and the father doesn't say nothing? Amen. He said, what kind of father is that? Go ahead, my brother. But if ye be without chastisement, where are all our partakers? And then are ye bastards and not sons. You're not 
you, you have no father. You have nobody to direct direct you. Amen. You have nobody in your life and you don't want to just That's right. If you don't want to be just then you don't want to follow. If you want to be just time, you want to go through this thing and you still, I, I will give you the patience. I will give you the strength in it. That's the thing about it. God's going to supply you in the chastening Amen. how to endure the chastening. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the ability. He's going to give you the wisdom. But you've got to endure. Yes. Amen. You cannot come to the other side unless you hang in there and endure. That's right. Go ahead, my brother. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which correct us, and we gave them reverence. That's right. Shall we not much rather be in subjection Unto the father of spirit and live. You know, I, I used to say this. Well, how many times our parents chastised us and we wasn't wrong? Yeah. And they made the error that went off. And you was like, I ain't doing nothing. Like, you know, and, and if you're from them old school parents, they ain't gonna stop. They ain't gonna go. They, they're wrong. They go, hey, anyway, you you gonna do it anyway? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just chastise you anyway. I'm gonna get on anyway. I know you were doing something. You ain't did it yet, I'm just gonna get on you now. But this father we have, he knows. His chest ties me that died in vain. That's right. He knows exactly what we need. Amen. He knows us exactly. That's why I should say he knows the numbers on our hair. He knows exactly what we need. That's right. He knows. He knows, he knows what the burden we can handle. He knows what we can go through. He knows what he's doing, what he's shaping us. He knows. You think all these trials don't amount to nothing? He was using these trials to build you, to instruct you, to change you, to make your mind more solid and fortified that you don't be removed so easily. You could be like, yeah, I see it. I've been through a lot with the Lord. It's just another thing I kind of go to him again. That's right. I'm going to do this. Amen. I'm hanging on and I'm trusting him. I'm not looking at the situation. I'm looking at him. My focus is on him. That's right. Amen. If you just hang in there, you will see it. Go ahead, my brother. But they very for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit. See that? They did it for their pleasure. When we got in trouble, they were doing it for them. God doing it for us. That's, right. That's the difference. What he do to us, it benefits us. Amen. When our parents are disciplining us, it benefits them. That's right. They was upset. They felt like if I get on you, I'm going to get the pleasure. That's right. But God, when he gets on us, we get something out of it. Totally the different opposite. Go ahead, my brother. But they barely for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit. That's right. That we might be partakers of his holiness. That's it. He's making us be partakers. He's bringing us part of his holiness. That's the whole purpose of the discipline. That's right. Amen. This is the cleansing. This is the thing that makes us holy. Go ahead. You have to cry. Go cry. Let the tears out. That's part of your discipline. Amen. Oh, in the end, something's going to happen. Go ahead, brother. Now, no chasing for the present seems to be joyous. It doesn't feel good. I'm right, I told you. It doesn't feel good all the time. Amen. It doesn't feel good. But what happened? What, what, what God trying to do? But grievous. It's grievous. I don't like that, Lord. I don't like what I'm going to just, just endure. Just hang in there. I got something. Something about to happen to you. If you just endure right now, I, I'm going to show you something. You're going to be different. Just hang in there and do it just a little bit longer. Why something about to happen to you? Amen. You're about to see somebody different. Right. For all of you to see different, I got to bring you through this. I got to bring you through this. And bring you to be solidified. Grow roots in me. To hold on to me. Just hang in there. Just, just wait a moment. You're going to see what I'm doing. Amen. Go ahead, my brother. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields us a peaceable, peaceable fruit of righteousness. Remember, he said, it's, it's, look, 
He said, one said prune, bring forth much fruit. One said discipline, bring forth peaceful fruit. Fruit is coming. That's right. If he prune you, fruit is coming. If he discipline, discipline you, fruit is coming. He's bringing forth something. That's right. If you just hang in there, you will see what he bring forth. The reason why some people don't see what God doing, they're ready to quit, ready to give up, ready to stop, and God say, I'm not done yet. I will keep you in this. Amen. Just hang in there for a moment. I will keep, I will keep you. I'm making you into something that you wasn't before when it's all over. Amen. You just got to endure it right now. You have to trust me. You have to sit there and pray to me. And lean on me. When you feel weak, talk to me. When you need strength, keep calling me. You need to do it. I'm going to bring you through it. Every step of the way, I will not leave you. This is for your benefits. That's right. Hallelujah. This is for your profit. When it's all over, you're going to get something out of it. Amen. God is invested in you. He's putting something in you. You can't see it until you go through it. It won't come forth until it's all over. But we quit before we say it. It's just too much. It's too hard. God said, I'm about to change you. I'm about to change you completely. If you just hang in there. What do you say, my brother? Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the piece of a fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, now look at this. See, Still talking about chest time. But look what we're supposed to also do while we're getting chest time. What is it there? We're going to be feeling down, but God tells us to do something after that. Wherefore, lift up the, lift up the hand which hang down. Don't be discouraged. And if Don't be, you, you're being chased. Don't be discouraged. Right. Lift up your hands. That's right. Lift up your hands. Yes, Lord, I know you're doing something. Lord, whatever it is, Lord God, you got me. Lift up, don't put your hands down. Send that Lord Amen. Jesus. Oh, lift up them hands before God. Just don't sit there. Wherefore, lift them hands up to God. Give him the glory in the midst of the struggle. In the midst of the pain. Give him the glory. Because I know you're going to lead me somewhere. I'm going to lift my hands up. I'm not going to sit. Is that going to put my hands down? I'm not putting, Lord Jesus, you are the greatest. Yeah. I know you're going to do something in my life. I trust you. Yeah. You're bringing forth something. Yeah. I don't see it. Yeah, something is on the other side. If I just endure, That's right. if I endure, I'm going to see something. Lift up your hands. What else, my brother? Wherefore, well, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. See now, you remember he was weak, we was weak. We couldn't take it. Feeble knees. What, what, what happened after that? And make straight. Straight. Stand up straight. For your feet. Lift your hand up and stand up straight and give God glory. Amen. Give God glory. Yes, oh, sit down now. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Lord Jesus. I stand up and give you glory. Stand up straight. What God is doing to you. Go ahead, my brother. And make straight paths. For your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Yes, but right. let it rather be healed. God gonna heal. You think, think about it. If God can hurt you, He can heal you. Amen. That's right. Where He cuts you, man, He can heal you. That's right. With a pruning like oh, that hurt it. You're no longer attached to it. Amen. It has no more control of it. Right. Now I can hear it, but first I have to cut it. I have to cut it first. And when I cut it, it's going to be painful. And after I cut it, I'm going to hear it. Amen. That's right. But don't miss what you're going to say. Yeah, you have to endure. That's right. The sword does not close up our method. It's an over period of time. Yes. If you just hang, you will see God does something. You will see. You see the healing. Yes, it will leave a scar. But the scar is saying, look what God brought me to. And I survived. Hallelujah, I survived. Look what he brought me to. He had to cut me, but look what he did. I survived. 
alive. That's why I'm lifting up my hands, standing up straight and giving them glory. I'm not bringing my hands. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give you the glory. I give you the glory to put us. Hey, my brother. Follow peace with all men mm -hmm. and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. It's all about being holy. That's right. That's what, that's, it's basically all he's doing is making us holy. He's, he's He's making us holy. Yes. He's making us holy. You know, we can uh, also be partakers of that process. Yes. The word cleanses us. That's right. You start reading the word. He says, sanctify by the words I speak to you. That's right. Sanctify by the words I speak to you. You can just use the word to cleanse us up. You don't just sit there and you know, um, I'm just, yes, wait on God. Yes. God said, you know, the word is part of the process too. That's right. You got you to let the word clean you up too. Yeah. You know how people, I want to get myself right with no word? How is it? How do you, you, I want to get myself, I'm going to live for God with no word? There is no right without the word. There is no correction without the word. There is no change. You cannot change without the word. Yes. You can't eliminate the word. I'm working on myself. No word. Amen. You got to have word to cleanse us all. That's right. Jesus said, you, he said, you're cleansed by the words I speak unto you. That's right. The word does some cleaning. Amen. It start working on you. It start telling you about yourself. That's right. You may not like it. It's going to hurt too. It's going to hurt. That's right. But it's part of the process. That's right. It's part of the process. It's yeah. going to hurt. It's gonna, you're going to say, oh Lord. If you ever read the word and it never hurt you, you never read it. Because the word is contrary against us. And eventually you're going to read something that's contrary against you. That's right. Something you're going to be in doing and you're going to read something like, oh God, you cut me. Amen. You cut me. It hurts. He said, woman. He said, yeah, I cut you. But I also be here. If you want to do it, I can hear that woman. But if you walk away, you're going to walk away. It's not just the cut, it's also the healing. You're going to walk away with the cut so you're going to walk around bleeding all the time until I lay my hands on it. you got to let me heal you after I cut you. Amen. Yes, Lord Jesus. What is that, my brother? Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. See, there's that's another key word, diligent. Amen. I mean, we, we got to be all in. Mm -hmm. That's right. Some people, they, they just, they go to church, but they're not really all in. All they just want to say, I go to church. I've been to church. I've been to church this week. That's it. But they're not all in. That's right. They're not all in. Amen. Like I say, this right here will cleanse us all. And so in the process of being pruned and being disciplined, at the same time, like I say, we got to also listen to the word. So I'm, I'm going to read this and we're going we're gonna to end it out. Uh, Book of Hebrews chapter 4. Because he was chapter four, uh, verse verse twelve. Now remember, I say, uh, I think it's uh, John seventeen seventeen. You don't have to get it. It says, um, I got it right here. So you stay on Hebrew, John seventeen seventeen. He said, "Sanctify them through the truth. That word is true. Sanctify is the setting apart, the cleansing by God." You know, I, I, I go wordplay. Don't you know at the time when the surgeon had to work, Amen. had to sterilize the equipment? That's sanctification. The 
equipment has to be sterilized to be able to cut the patient. Amen. The word is sterilized to cut you. So you don't get affected. What is the affection? The sin. So if the word is the word is is being uh, sanctified, is being sterilized, it also cuts you where you can't get affected. That's right. Why do you think people that has the right surgery walk away feeling healed? Because they wasn't affected by the cut. I read it, uh, uh, Psalm, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12? Yes. So, so the verse, uh, verse, uh, verse, verse, verse uh, 10. And then we go. We go verse 10. Go. He that is entered into his rest, mm -hmm. he also has ceased from his own works, mm -hmm. as God did from his. Mm -hmm. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest. Let any man fall mm -hmm. after the same example of unbelief. That's right. For the word of God is quick. There it is. And powerful. That's it. And sharper than any That's the cutting. That's right. Sometimes you have to cut yourself. That's right. The scripture says, if your hand or finger. Cut it off. Amen. If you see something in this in you, a finger, it's something that's in in you. Take the word and cut it off. It was a finger, cut it off. You see, think about it. You think it's going to survive. Let me tell you something about the Bible. And I, I, I don't know. I just watched the worship. Once you cut off a part of your body and you're able to, like, close off this section, the body is able to survive. But the hand will die because it has no circulation. Because it's not attached to a living thing. That's right. So it dies out. So whatever that is about us, stop giving it life. Cut it off. Take the word and cut it off. God give you permission where you can cut your own self. Cut it off. Amen. If your hands, are, if you stop being so comfortable with yourself, if you know you see something that God show you don't you don't like, like David said, examine me, search me. If you see this thing, take the knife and cut it off. Amen. Stop letting it live. Right. It's, you, it's, it's just like a disease. Just because it's in his hand doesn't mean it's not going to affect the whole body. It's got to come and spread. Until you get the mind to say, before it spread. And you know what it's trying to do? Get to the heart. That's right. Get to the heart, then you get affected until the point it kills you. So you have to cut it off. Take the word of God and cut yourself. Whatever it is that affects you, whatever the thing that's hindering you, that's holding you back, cut it off. Yes. Take the word and cut yourself. That's right. If it offends you, if you hide, if you hide, if you plug it out. That's right. Whatever it is, whatever is interfering your walk with God, cut it off. Do your own cutting. But you know what? You have to be open and honest. You gotta be like David. When God exposed him this weekend against you, against thee and all you, I said, he stopped cutting himself. Right. Cleanse me. Cut himself. Right. Cleanse me, God. Cut me, God. Let me take it and cut my. I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna cut myself. Go ahead, my brother. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edges. It's sharp. Let me tell you something. The word, that's, that's how you know it's real word. It can be years and years. It never get dull. <laughs> that not never get dull. You can pick it up 10 years later, still sharp. <laughs> still sharp. It's sharp. It's like an everlasting sharp. It's going to cut it always. Remember, uh, it's telling our age, some of us still remember. The Gizu knife. The Gizu cut, oh, cutting the can. Cutting, oh, I got to get a Gizu knife. It keep cutting. Nothing can stop it. It keep cutting. Amen. So don't be afraid to use it. If you see something that's in you, you got permission to cut yourself. Do not let whatever it is in your life 
and you come. That's right. If it got to be all these people with all this foolishness, let me tell you something. Do not sit around with people that agree with your sin. I'm just telling you, that's just a serious thing. Because why? All they're doing is making your sin worse than what it is. Sometimes you got to cut them. I don't care if it's friends, it's family. I got to cut you. That's right. Because if I stay attached to you, you're going to affect me. Amen. You're going to affect my heart. God gave us permission to do my own surgery. You know what I'm saying? Cut yourself. It's like, oh, you got that splinter? You know what I'm saying? That thing you're going to call a doctor. Get it all out. Amen. Work on yourself. I'll sit up there. Because guess what? Just like sin, it's going to hang up at you. Oh, God, get it with you. Like, oh, my God. It had to come out. You feel it, you think about it, even when you ain't thinking about it, it's a fact of God temperature. It's amazing. Let me tell you how God is. It's amazing. A little splinter can get on your nerves. That's right. That little big piece of thing. Not bigger than this. <laughs> I mean, I can see you get hit by a two by four. But you get so big piece. Oh God, it's still in me. Oh, it's aggravating even when you forget about it. Oh, I still got it. Oh, that's how God affects us. Amen. It binds us until it comes out. So you got to be willing to cut it. Go ahead, my brother. Person, even to the divider. See, this is a uh, this this is not just a regular sword. It cuts deep. That's right. It cuts deep. Well, let me tell you, when you really get cut, you can't say, oh, it didn't cut me. It cuts deep. You feel it. Not just in your bones, you feel it in your soul. It cuts deep. Okay. It cuts way down and touch your soul. That's how powerful that knife is. Right. You'll sit down, you'll be like, okay, it didn't work. Hit you. Like, oh, God, I felt that. It cuts deep. It cuts to the point you can't stop it. That's right. Amen. You can't stop that cutting. That's how powerful a word God is. What do you say, my brother? Parison, even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, mm -hmm. and of the joints and heart, and if a is discerned of the thoughts and intent of the heart. That's what the word does. It shows you yourself. It shows you what you have to cut. It discerns you. So, I'm looking at her. Oh, look at her. She need to be cut. No, you cut yourself. Cut yourself. You worry about them being cut. It's not going to help you. Cut yourself. If you see it in you, cut it. That's right. See, cut it like, oh my God, it has to go. It has to get out of my life. It has to go. Here's the word. That's so why I say to people, I'm going to get right, I'm, I'm doing all right. But you're not reading the word. That's part of the process of your cleaning. That's right. What do you say, my brother? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. You say, nobody can hide from God. Remember David said, my sins are forever for you. That's right. Yeah, you can hide from me. You can offend me, you can hide from me all you want. You know, some people think, because... You see me, you gonna remember your offense. No, because I see God. Because I can avoid you and get you out of my mind. But God can follow me. That's right. I can be thinking about it. Amen. I was wrong. Forever my sins are before you. That's right. What do you say, my brother? Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight. Nobody can hide. That's right. I don't care who you are. That's right. Nobody. I don't care how much you think you can hide from God in his word. Right. Nobody. Amen. I don't care who you are. Every looking at everybody else, just be. It may not, like, I, like somebody say, it may not hit you yet. Yeah. It got rounds. <laughs> it got rounds. Yeah. Okay, it didn't hit you in the morning. Remember, they got morning, noon, and night. It got rounds. It's coming. That's right. It's going to hit you somewhere. One day it's going to hit you. Stick around. Right. You give it noise, it's gonna hit you. That's right. Go ahead, my brother. But all things are 
things are naked and open unto the eyes naked. of him. Naked. That's right. Just like I mean, naked. They hid because they were naked. He already saw you naked. You already revealed. Like I said, why well, hide? Just be open. Like, oh, hey, I ate that fruit. Help me. That's right. Don't hide. Help me. Amen. It's open. He sees. Why? Why even? Listen, don't even. I know sometimes people, they feel better if they're hypocrite. No. Go before the Lord. Don't hide. Amen. Talk to him. Amen. Talk to him. Your change really don't start with people. It start with God. Stop relying on people for the change. Because if you rely on people for the change, it's not going to last. That's right. Just because you see, oh, oh, I feel convicted when I see you. That is temporary. But God is forever. Forever. Wherever you go, forever. Where can I make my bed? Forever. You're everywhere. Everywhere. Even God will be in your dreams. He's everywhere. You can't escape. Go ahead, brother. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. <laughs> Seeing then that we have a great high priest That's right. that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Yes. Let us hold fast our profession. That's it right there. Let us know. That's right. If you profess to walk with God and say you live for God, hold on. Hold fast. Thank you. You hold on to God. Yes, Lord. Hold fast. Hold on to God to the end. You will see the results. Thank you, Lord. So I thank the Lord God for y'all. Y'all continue to pray for me. Yes. Yes. We thank the Lord God for that.